white man um, from the U.S. Uh, I would call him a brother because he's my brother, okay? The reason why I'm calling him my brother is because you have no idea what it takes for someone to speak truth against uh, his community, you know, to show the wrongdoing of his community. So this white brother uh, explained how he overcome um, racism, how he over overcome being racist. He, he tell his story about uh, what happened, what, is, what was the process of him understanding how white society really bullies uh, uh, African Americans in this country and then uh, other black people, other African people across the world. So let's watch the video and then we're, we're gonna talk about it. I was raised racist and what helped me overcome the racism that I'd been taught is when I got away from Waverly and went off to college and um, basically what I realized was that my whole entire childhood, all the abuse, all the hate, all the trauma that I endured is I had a lot of bullshit as a kid that really uh, affected me and changed me for the negative, for the worse. But what I realized when I went to college was all that stuff I went through was for one reason, bigotry. And when I realized that, I began to open up my heart and my mind and I made an oath. And I remember the time in Savannah, Georgia, where I was in the day, I made an oath of myself and God that I would no longer be a product of my environment and I would think objectively as an individual and that's exactly what I did from that point on. And I decided to reject what I had been taught and to look at things critically and objectively. And I began to see bigotry and I began to realize that white people were bullying black people. And then a couple years later I had a black roommate and oh my God, seeing what this guy went through in Savannah, Georgia was fucking horrific and he was a great guy and we became best friends and to this day this is 1990 to this day he is still my best friend but he is the one that took me under his wing and taught me about black culture and about black history and that's where my journey began and a few years later i did my first activism at a factory job and i lost my job because of it i challenged a bunch of racists i stood up to them almost got killed they threatened me, but they did make me lose my job. And I went into poverty after that for three years. But I'll be honest, I would do it again. I might do it differently. I would I would do it with a lawyer. But I was young and dumb, but I was glad of what I did. Um, I stood up against racism starting in about, uh, I guess it was 90, actually it was 90, 92, I think. And after that, I went into poverty. But anyhow, I'm sorry I'm rambling, but that's how it started for me. You asked, and um, there's your answer. Thank you. This white man is clearly a good-hearted man. We can tell how he was able to switch from being racist to becoming a decent person. Where he even lost his job and went, to, and went into poverty for three years. And his life was threatened in 1993 when he defended an African-American man against a racist white boss. Which uh, threatened to, to kill him and made him lose his job. My brother Dixon D. White, I want to say that uh, you are what is needed in this world. And you are a fine and rare human being. I'm pretty sure that uh, the Creator is proud of you for being a good hearted person among demons that surrounds you. And I pray to the Creator to protect you from the evil of this world. And hopefully, your actions inspire these demons, white supremacists, to follow your path and repent of their sins before the judgment day because uh, the judgment day is coming soon for these diabolic schizophrenic racist white people their days are counted on earth and the creator will judge them mercilessly without mercy and give them what they deserve which is hell racism is a deeply ingrained social issue that has a plague uh, society for centuries. It manifests in various forms, including institutionalized discrimination, racial profiling, and eight crimes. Racism is a destructive 
force that do not only arm individuals, but also undermines the fabric of our society. African Americans and Africans across the world have been uh, disproportional, disproportionately affected by the racism, resulting in devastating consequences for their well-being and the livelihoods. First and foremost, racism is morally wrong. It is a fundamental violation of human dignity and undermines the principle of equality. And every human being deserves to be treated with respect and dignity, regardless of race or ethnicity. Racism denies people uh, this basic right and perpetuates a system of oppression and inequality. It is an evil that must be eradicated from society. African Americans and Africans across the world um, have uh, suffered the consequences of racism for centuries historically. Africans were subjected to the brutality of the transatlantic slave trade, which resulted in the forced migration of the million of Africans to the Americas, and the legacy of the slavery has had a lasting impact on African Americans who continue to face discrimination and prejudice in various aspects of their lives. From the criminal justice system to the job market, African Americans and Africans are often treated unfairly due to their race. Furthermore, racism has a detrimental impact on the mental health of individuals who are subjected to it. Constant exposure to discrimination and the human, uh, dehumanization can lead to psychological distress, anxiety, and depression. Racism can also result in physical health problems such as hypertension and cardiovascular disease. Africans, American, and uh, African across the world are disproportionately affected mm -hmm. by this health issue which are directly linked to the stress and trauma of experiencing racism. It is important to recognize that uh, racism is not a personal belief or attitude, but rather a systemic issue that requires collective action to dismantle it. Racist individuals may require psychiatric help to address their attitudes and belief. But the root of the problem lies in the structures of society that perpetuate racism. This includes policies and practices that discriminate against certain racial groups, as well as the cultural narrative that portray people of color or Africans as inferior. In conclusion, racism is a moral and social evil that as devastating consequences for African Americans and Africans across the world. It undermines the principle of equality and perpetuates a system of oppression and inequality and racist individual may require psychiatric help to address their attitude and belief. But ultimately, it is society's responsibility to dismantle the structure that perpetuates racism. We must work towards a future where all individuals are treated with respect and dignity, regardless of the race or ethnicity. Mr. Dixon D. White, thank you for, your, uh, for being a wonderful person. Keep raising awareness of the evil of racism. Thank you all for watching.